Good morning. Hey, Risa, thanks for joining us. It's Margo and Risa here from My Favorite Quilt Store, and we wanted to talk a little bit about English paper piecing. Absolutely, and also you, EPP. Yeah, right, EPP, our English paper piecing. Yes. Exactly. So we have a couple different things, and I know you have started teaching yourself how to do yes. English paper piecing. Yes. And it, you've used tutorials on YouTube. Did you go to any look at Tula's? Yes, okay. I sure have. So Tula has a lot of tutorials on English paper piecing Which on her site. Good. So she has a bag of tools that she uses for English paper piecing. So we've put that bag of tools together. Absolutely. So this is for purchase on our site. It comes in this cute uh, zebra, zebra um, pack. And let's go through some of the things that are her favorite tools for English paper piecing. Absolutely. Um, first of all are her snips. And yes. she, her snips work really great for clipping fabrics, th threads close to one another. And they're curved, so right. you can get down on the surface of the fabric and trim right there at the surface, not yep. leaving any little pieces. And then her six inch scissors are great for cutting out the pieces. Yes. So they're very sharp and very nice to cut out the pieces. Sharp they are. Sharp, sharp, they, sharp are. they are. Okay, so the next thing that's in this kit is the uh, one and a half, one inch hexes because you need to practice a little bit before yes, you start. You so this is actually just a hexy pre-pack of the paper that you would need to make the- It's been laser cut, so right. all the edges are nice and sharp and even. And you're right, I would definitely get some scrap fabric and just start practicing, practicing. the process. You have to train your fingers. What is it? Muscle memory. Muscle memory. That's exactly right. So to put the fabric on and to get it adhered around, she uses the glue stick. So this comes with the glue pin and two extra refills. Refills, right. So that you have lots of glue because when you're you're going around them and gluing them through the paper before you start sewing. But not necessarily a lot. lot. I know, you not a lot. You don't want to over glue. You don't want to. But this is fabric safe glue. That's yes. the most important thing. And it will eventually wash away yep. when you launder but it does work it 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 works yep so the other thing that you can use are these so tight i love these um magnets magnet magnets so you put the fabric in between these two they're magnets that hold mm -hmm. it together and will hold it perfectly together while you sew while you sew and these come in a variety of shapes you can buy the rectangle bars there's, there's her heart, her heart there's, there's rainbows and stars and <laughs> there's all kinds all of, different colors all different kinds of ones but they're called so, so tight, tight tiles tiles exactly so tight tiles because yeah. that's a i have a hard time finding them sometimes because I, I call them the wrong name but it's so tight, tight. Tiles. tiles like epp -P. So all tiles. these all this lingo so okay what exactly else did right come so with? she uses the number 10 large eye needle from right. that are tulip needles for and they're applique needles and she uses these for sewing which that number 10 is going to leave just a small hole, entry hole for the thread to go through. Okay. But yet the eye is large enough that I can see it when I'm threading the needle. So to thread the needle, she has a needle threader. So she finds this, this is her favorite needle threader. It's by Sewline. It um, comes in this package and it's really easy to thread the needle with um, right this. So it's basically a line of products. It is a line of products. Okay. So and, line, then, so line is. and then she uses Orifil thread. Okay. Yes. And this is a um, very good basic, very good basic white color. And it is a 50 weight thread, which, which is, is a little thinner. Yes. So yeah. that it, so that you, when you're um, hand sewing, you don't see it in the, in the middle of the seams. These are the tools that I use. Okay. I mean, I can't think of anything that she's left out. And I like the fact that it comes in a bag because then I can throw this bag in the car with me and, and sew in the front seat as the passenger. Right. Or on the airplane or the front porch or wherever I'm gonna go, I can put my project in the bag yep. in addition to all my tools. Yep, I think that's a fabulous idea. Let's show one of the projects that you did and let's talk about your project that you did over here. We've got it to the side. We'll put all our tools back away in our packet. So you can get this Tula's English paper piecing tools, favorite tools on our site. Yes. When I was learning, Margot, I needed big because I needed to train my hands okay. how to do it. I've hand sewn forever right. in a day, but I needed to figure out how to do this myself. So what I bought were the large 
pexies. Okay, so they look to be about two inch instead of the one inch and just started piecing it together with scraps. These are all batiks. I use this during the fall, put my pumpkins and decorations on it. It's a small so table. It's runner. a small table runner. Yes. Exactly. And I like this being open because that's where you see the table right. that it's placed on. Right. And you get a real fill. So this is, this particular shape is called Grandmother's Flower Garden. Yes. And yeah. you use it as a table runner on the quilt. So so this gave you the skills you needed to go down to the next size, to so go to right. the one inch. Before I invest in really big fabrics. I consider the tool a really big fabric. Yeah. <laughs> you know, before I invest in that, I need to practice okay. as we all do. As we all do. This and so is great that, that is true. So anytime to get better at something, you do have to practice. Yes. yes. And so I would suggest getting some scrap fabric and some English paper piecing uh, paper and are just things start and, playing. Start, and start playing with it to learn um, how to make the, um, how to do it. So we do have also some kits. Several um, gorgeous. That we have here. We have Hex on the Beach, which is a small hexagon on the back. It's like a one inch hexagon. And it has the um, template inside, the acrylic template used to cut all the fabrics. And so this gives you a layout and diagram of all the fabrics that are in here. Absolutely. And this looks like it's mainly made from her solids and dot collection. Yes. Yes. So, ba some, so some basics. I love it. Hex on the beach. Hex on the beach. <laughs> and then this one is Tula's Bloomers. And it's a variety of shapes. It is. It's got not only the hex, but it's got um, some, diamond, some shapes, diamond shapes. And that's where you really need to have practiced and learned your skill set so that you can understand where those pieces are going to connect and how you have to get and your how, needle in because you're right because so this is this is a star and then some hexagons around right, right so it's it's two different shapes in this one so this one i would say is slightly not a more starter. advanced <laughs> slightly more advanced yes. once you've learned to go around the hexagon right and this one is called um alchemy, alchemy. and it is brand new and it does use all of the basics in here in her wow. um, Tula's collection. And I'm telling you, it is beautiful. I do know, I did notice that there was a Facebook group, an open Facebook group, that they're all working on this quilt. Um, How and wonderful you can join is that? Like and. Like a support group. Like a support group, <laughs> exactly, for the hand sewing and all the people that are doing it. So anyway, we just wanted to show you some of the English paper piecing products we have here. Absolutely. So that you can get started and be ready for when we um, release the Queen of Diamonds. Diamonds in June 2023. Right. right. So thanks for joining us. Y'all have a great day. Bye. Happy sewing.